Good morning, everybody. Ernie here, worship pastor from The Gathering with your daily encouragement. And this morning, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the letter that Paul writes to Philemon. And uh, Philemon 17 through 25 is the scriptures I'll be covering. But to give you the context of it, Philemon is somebody that Paul had um, discipled in the past. And currently in this letter, Paul finds himself in prison in shackles. And he is discipling people while he's in jail. And one of the men that he's discipling is Onesimus. And Onesimus was a former slave of Philemon's, who I believe he stole from Philemon and did whatever he did and, um, and ran away or was taken away and put in jail. And uh, what Paul is asking of Philemon is he's saying, hey, this guy Onesimus that I've been discipling, I know who he was to you, a slave, and who wronged you. But Paul's letting him know that I've discipled him and he's a different man now. So what Paul is doing is he's sending Onesimus with a handwritten letter from Paul. And he's sending Onesimus back to Philemon. And the letter says, so Philemon's going to show up to Phil. I mean, Onesimus is going to show up to Philemon's house, right? This guy, this former slave who did him wrong is showing up with this letter from Paul, which um, is it's an interesting letter, right? So Paul says in this letter, I could demand of you. So who Paul is to Philemon, Paul says, I could demand this of you, but instead I would rather ask you in love that you receive Onesimus as if you're receiving me and that you wipe away all his debts. And you no, know, in fact, Paul doesn't ask him to wipe away all his debts because it's already hard enough that he's asking him to receive them. Paul says, take all the debts that he owes you and put it on my tab. And I'm writing with my own hand, my own signature, that I will repay it, repay it back. And what cracks me up here, right, is Paul follows that up immediately with, first he says, put it all on my tab. And then he follows that up with, and I don't need to remind you that you owe me your very life, do I? And I know, because I know of who you are, I know you're going to do these things that I'm asking of you, and you're going to do even far more than that. And then he goes on to encourage Philemon and says, I believe that because of your prayers, I will be out of these shackles and back with you. So he asks him also to prepare a room for me that I will be coming. But in the meantime, receive Onesimus, your former slave, but don't receive him as a slave or as someone who owes you a debt. Receive him as a brother in Christ and that this man will be with you to do the work of the Lord throughout your days. And so it's an incredible um, example of what mentorship can do in a relationship, right? And what discipleship can do to change somebody. So Paul's mentorship of Philemon has given him so much love equity that he can ask this of Philemon. And on, on the same note, his discipleship to Onesimus is so strong and important that he's confident that he's sending this disciple back to this disciple, not sending this slave to this person who was wronged by the slave. You see how he erases the past that these two have. And what he's saying is, I'm sending you, Philemon, this brother in Christ that I've mentored the way I've mentored you. You two are now brothers and receive him as if you're receiving me. So, so much power in this letter. And I love how Paul, instead of demanding this, he says, I'm going to ask you to do these things in love. And so let that be the example of how different it is to encourage somebody in love, to ask things of people in love. And even though Paul had the right to use authority, he chose to ask in love. And so let's not forget a couple lessons here. Mentorship is important. Discipleship is important. Grace and love is very important. And so the way we ask things of people, it matters. So there's my encouragement for the morning, and we'll see you guys all tomorrow morning with another daily encouragement.